Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Briefly, in hopefully 90 seconds or less, let me just touch on the National Football League, then we'll dive into Janady Golovkin against Curtis Stevens, the post-fight. Okay, first, uh, here on YouTube in August, look it up, I gave a little critique on the Atlanta Falcons, and my argument then was to sell the, Fran the Falcons. I believe the video was made August 26. You should be able to cash that ticket. They just lost again to the Carolina Panthers. Matt Ryan, quite frankly, has been throwing the ball to guys in the wrong uniform. Atlanta came into the season overrated, right? You should be able to cash that ticket. Word of advice to gamblers, continue to look at the Carolina Panthers as a futures play. They're rising up the board, justifiably so, especially if they win one of their next two games. On the road, at San Francisco, at home, against New England, right? If they win one of those two games, it's up, right? You should be able to be able to make the playoffs, and then, of course, you can hedge out of the play as you see fit and as necessary to make a profit. Also, the New Orleans Saints, they lost. Seattle won. Seattle has some breathing room now for the NFC title. Understand New Orleans, more importantly, has structural problems. Look at how many rushing yards they gave up yesterday to the New York Jets. Understand that bodes badly for them because they have two games coming up against Carolina Carolina could easily win one, if not both, of those two games. Let's talk about Janady Golovkin against Curtis Stevens. Janady Golovkin delivered. Got the KO. The gamblers in this corner of the internet should be okay. Right? But the question arises. Can Janady Golovkin be beaten? And I believe, looking at this fight... The answer is yes, right? This fight, quite frankly, even though it was a dominating win, in my opinion, at least in the eyes of this gambler, gives you the blueprint on what would give Janady Golovkin all kinds of trouble. Now, let's talk about my unorthodox view of boxing. You know how they talk about staying in the pocket, right? Well, I believe that both fighters have a pocket, right? The problem, well, I believe the secret to beating Janady Golovkin, what I believe only elite fighters would be able to pull off, is that you have to be able to stay in his pocket, right? Golovkin, to me, looks like he needs space to operate. There are times in this fight where he's trying to push Stevens off of him, that's a dead giveaway, right? That's a dead giveaway that he needs space to operate. If you look at this fight against Stevens, you're going to notice that there are hardly any clinches the entire fight. Stevens just doesn't have the skill set to take a step forward and to tie up the bigger man, right? So Golovkin, of course, knows Stevens is going to be in front of him, nor does Stevens have the foot speed to move away, nor does Stevens have the upper body elusiveness to actually bend at the waist, right? Stevens is accustomed to being the shorter man in fights, so he hasn't really developed the skill of bending at the waist, right? Well, let's just talk about the kind of fighters who can work a blueprint and get up on Janady Golovkin to neutralize his power and to break up his rhythm. Now, let me just say, when I mention a blueprint, understand you have to be extremely talented. You have to have the skill set to take advantage of a blueprint. Put another way, if there exists a blueprint in baseball to get a batter out by throwing 95 miles an hour fastballs inside on the guy's hands, then the only people who 
can benefit from that blueprint would be pitchers who could throw 95 miles an hour with location. Same thing applies for boxing. The only guys who can use this blueprint are the Andre Wards and Bernard Hopkinses of the world, right? Guys who can smother you. If you want to see a prototypical smother fight, where a guy who looked unbeatable but needed space to operate got smothered. Look at the infamous Felix Trinidad versus Bernard Hopkins fight. Right? Hopkins smothers Trinidad's deadly left hook. Smothers it. He's too close to Trinidad for Trinidad to set his feet and to get the punch off. Right, Trinidad eventually breaks, ends up with his back up against the ropes, getting beaten up by a very in control Bernard Hopkins. I believe the same problem applies to Janady Golovkin. Right, Golovkin hunts you down. He's the hunter. He's not the hunted. Right, he's not accustomed to guys able to come at him on their front foot and get inside of his bombs. He does have a great jab, no question about it. It comes right down Main Street. But guys who know how to time the entry point, who can dodge the jab and get inside, I believe, would destabilize Janady Golovkin. Let me also disagree with HBO, right? And don't get me wrong, I love HBO. But I'm going to disagree with their analysis here. At the end of the fight, they actually showed you the boxing diagram dummy, right? And they made the argument that Janady Golovkin goes to the head and the body. Let's get real. Curtis Stevens is really a sitting duck. Not a lot of elusiveness, right? It's so bad that Curtis Stevens' idea of being elusive wasn't moving side to side. It was backing up to the rope. So there are rounds here where Stevens is on this rope, that rope, this rope, that rope, right? The point I'm making is simply that Janady Golovkin is primarily a headhunter. That's his bread and butter. I know we landed some body shots on Curtis Stevens, who wasn't hiding his body. Right? Big deal. Golovkin is primarily a headhunter. Let's talk Sergio Martinez for a second. Understand Sergio Martinez, and I'll agree. There's a huge health risk. Martinez is coming off of surgery, and there's also ring rust. You would want Martinez to fight Golovkin after he shakes off the rust. I would want Martinez to at least be able to come back and test out his surgically repaired body before hopping in the ring with Janady Golovkin. But understand, Martinez hides his upper body. Right? Just food for thought. You know, it's hard to find Martinez above the waist. He's bent over. The angles would be completely different than the angles presented by Curtis Stevens. Also, Golovkin has a thing where he tries to dictate tempo. So, like most hunters, he comes in and he's faking and he's expecting you to have to react to his face. Well, understand... Martinez is deceptive because Martinez hits awfully hard. Martinez is a puncher. Understand, before Janady Golovkin knocked out Matthew Macklin, Sergio Martinez did. Right? Understand, Martinez hit so hard, guys don't know what hit them. Martinez dropped Kermit Cintron. Cintron got up convinced that he had been hit with a forearm or an elbow, right? Martinez was the first man to stop Sergei Zinzurich. Martinez was the first man to stop Darren Barker. Don't be fooled by the fact that Martinez's last two fights have gone the distance. If Martinez comes back and that knee is healthy and he's able to get leverage off his legs, He's a devastating puncher. You remember what Paul Williams looked like on the canvas in the rematch. Folks, that was an early KO. So my point is this. 
both Martinez and Golovkin like to faint and like to try to get you guessing on rhythm. But understand, if Martinez is elusive and hard to hit and he starts to bounce, just like Golovkin likes to bounce a little bit, that might throw Golovkin's rhythm off. Because I'm not sure if Golovkin has ever faced a guy who hits as hard as Martinez with the elusiveness of Martinez. I know right now the crowd roared when Golovkin said he'd like to fight Sergio Martinez, right? He gave a name, right? My point to you is if Martinez comes back and he's still Sergio Martinez, I'm not sure if I'd take Golovkin in that fight. Sergio Martinez is very dangerous and he's much harder to hit. And I mean much harder to hit than Curtis Stevens. Well, let's get even more real. Let's say Golovkin gains weight, moves to 168 and fights Andre Ward like a lot of people want him to, or fights Bernard Hopkins. Understand, Hopkins has said he's willing to drop down to fight Floyd Mayweather. You know what? If Hopkins drops down, there are a lot of fascinating fights involving Bernard, including a fight against this guy, Golovkin. And all I'm saying is, if the dynamic is different, if you have an opponent who can actually fight inside, who can actually get up on Golovkin and clinch him, tell me the Golovkin fight where a guy's actually clinching him, throwing off his rhythm, right? If you're dealing with a guy who lands the amount of punches Curtis Stevens landed and Stevens landed many flush shots in this fight. Many. But rather than admire the work like Stevens did, Stevens would land a flush shot and stand there. Can you imagine Hopkins landing a flush shot and then by the time Golovkin's head clears, being up on him, holding him? Right? Now I have no doubt that Golovkin is one of the best in boxing pound for pound. I don't mean to disparage the guy. There are many people at 160 and 168 that he can beat. I'd take Golovkin over Peter Quillen. In fact, let me back up a little bit on that statement. First, I'd bet distance in the fight because I don't see how that fight would go the distance. Then I would expect Golovkin to win that fight. But when you're talking about Guys who can fight in Golovkin's pocket, who can actually invade his space. Ward and Hopkins. I take Ward and Hopkins over Golovkin, assuming the fight's at 168. I'll agree weight matters in boxing, and I wouldn't expect a Bernard Hopkins or a Ward to lose weight to fight Golovkin, right? Golovkin's making his name. He should gain weight to fight those guys. Right? I would take Ward and Hopkins over Golovkin because Golovkin got hit with a lot of shots by Curtis Stevens. Right? And I really wonder what happens if Golovkin is forced to fight on his back foot. Right? At 160, all I'm saying is I'm going to have to look at more films before I make a decision on who wins Golovkin, Sergio Martinez. Right? Understand that while it's true, that Martinez is older. And while it's true that Martinez has had surgery, right, and hasn't been in the ring for a while, right, all I'm saying to you is if Martinez comes back rested, given that Martinez, you know, hasn't been hit a lot, right, that Margarito fight was years ago. Martinez hasn't been hit a lot. He's in great shape for a guy in his later 30s, right? If Martinez still is Sergio Martinez, I don't know why the world is assuming that Gennady Golovkin walks through it, right? Martinez likes to be pursued in fights, right? He, he wants the other guy to be on his front foot. 
Martinez has more problems when a Matthew Macklin starts to fight on his back foot. Right? Martinez wants you trying to land on his upper body. Martinez is an excellent counter puncher. Martinez never gets hit often with the other guy's jab. Right? Let's just say, let's slow the roll down on picking a winner in Golovkin against Sergio Martinez. Curtis Stevens, quite frankly, was tailor-made for Gennady Golovkin, right? I think Golovkin right now might be a little bit overvalued because of his blowout wins against Ishida, Matthew Macklin, and Curtis Stevens, right? Let's not confuse that level of competition with Sergio Martinez, Andre Ward, and Bernard Hopkins, right? Let's enjoy a hunter hunting down prey, doing what he does best. But understand, boxing's two-way. And Golovkin got hit a lot by Curtis Stevens, right? I mean, flush shots. CompuBox isn't going to tell you the intensity of the shot, right? He got hit a lot by Curtis Stevens with flush shots, and all I'm saying is Stevens didn't have the capability to take a step forward, tie up Golovkin, force him to fight with one hand. I know Andre Ward and Bernard Hopkins have that capability. We've seen it in fights like the Alan Green fight for Ward and the Felix Trinidad fight for Bernard Hopkins. Right. Also, in terms of punching power, Golovkin hits hard. But understand... Hopkins has already been in with a bigger man, naturally bigger man, with a completely outsized punch. I can't say that Golovkin hits harder than Jean Pascal. Nor should anyone think that Golovkin hits harder than Kelly Pavlik. Right? And we saw what Martinez and Hopkins were able to do to Kelly Pavlik. So food for thought. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.